Today, we're visiting Taylor Nicole Dean. Taylor is a YouTuber with over 1.5 million subscribers. She's known for her pet education channel, and she owns over 50 pets, including 14 snakes, a two-foot monitor lizard, and a very famous cowfish. This is Like and Subscribe. This is my animal room. This is where all my animals live, um, except the ones that can't handle the heat in here because it does get very warm in here. This is where I spend most of my time every day. Taylor is part of a niche of YouTube creators, sometimes called PetTube. PetTubers own dozens of animals and make videos about taking care of them. A trademark of the genre is having one video that features all of your pets. Taylor's has almost 10 million views. So basically what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna show you all of my animals. Who is this guy? Oh, that's Kronos. He is... Psycho. He is a roughneck monitor. All they think about is eating and surviving. So they are very aggressive animals. You want an egg? Is that a real egg? Yes. What kind of egg is it? What a quail. That? Oh no, that's me. Can you please let go? You have teeth and that very much hurts. I will be bleeding now. Yeah. Thank you very much for this. <laughs> so you have to learn to not be reactive to the bites. Mm -hmm. Like I get bit enough to where I don't react because if I react and I like flail around, I can end up hurting him, so I just kind of have to just sit there and endure the bite until they let go. But with animals like him, and then my green tree python, you have to get used to it, because they are not nice, <laughs> so you're gonna get bit. This guy, you said, he's eating quail eggs, mm -hmm. and baby mice, mm -hmm. and rabbit mm -hmm. mulch? Yeah. Um, <laughs> what other kinds of foods are we feeding these snakes and these lizards? They all eat different things, but rats and insects are the main diet of this room. Can we see where you keep the mice and rats? Yes. And it's very disturbing for people that like get a snack or something because these are all just, they're just. Look at this. This is a lot of yeah, furry dead rats. I have to order them in bulk online and they just show up at my apartment. And how they long will this supply of dead mice and rats last you? Well, since I have 14 snakes, um, they, get, they only eat once a week. Honestly, the small ones, this will last me months and months, but the big ones, I'll be out before the end of the month, probably. The supply of rats here, like how much does this cost? With shipping, it's probably around $100, Delivery. This was a three-day delivery, and I ordered one, two, three, four different kinds, so that one was probably like $80. I'm gonna thaw some fish food out too for later. Every single penny I made last year went right back into my animals, so I did not profit anything off of anything I did last year. Yeah. People think of having a successful YouTube channel mm -hmm. as being really lucrative. Yes, um, it's definitely gotten more lucrative this year, but last year it was like right when I was taking off, I, I hit a million by the end of the year, so it was all pre one million subscribers. After I did all my taxes and stuff, I was literally at the end of the year, I made $6,000 and that was it. <laughs> and all my money went right back into YouTube, or went right back into all this, because I mean, that fish tank right there is 15 grand. Like, wow. their animals are very expensive. So if I go back to the core of like everything, like all my animals, my favorite projects, this fish tank is my favorite project that I have. My cowfish is worshiped on my channel. What and about him do you think has captivated the public so much? Why is cheese such a star? People chase you. Like if I walk over here, he's going to run to me. He's extremely, extremely sociable and extremely intelligent. That's definitely what's resonated with people. Also, he's square. He's just a funny looking fish. Yeah, there's something about his eyes. Like they're so yes. big and that you can see, like he has such a little face from the front. Yes. I try feeding this tank. So they will go nuts over seaweed. I actually have some up here. This looks like a, exactly like the seaweed that you would eat like on a sushi roll. Yes. Like it looks like nori. It is, it's nori. Oh, great. Yeah. So these guys will rip this apart in seconds. Um, do you want to try? You wanna yes, try I there? really do. Okay. Just hold on to it and put it in there and you could just, you could keep holding on to it. Okay. Just put like at least halfway in there, if not more. Okay, I'm gonna unfold it. And you could keep holding on to it and they'll- Come on guys. Oh, wow, yep, they're pretty excited about this. Yeah, Cheese adores it. Erwin will eat the whole thing if, if <laughs> given the chance. Yes, Cheese is more polite. I do have a, a spider too, if you guys. Okay, kitties, please don't attack my spider. This one here is my only arachnid right now. It's my uh, rose hair tarantula. I've had her for, I want to say three years. So, her name is Cersei. I named her after the villain on Game of Thrones. Uh, rose hairs are one of the more social of the spiders. Like, they're the ones that you can interact with 
and not freak them out too much. So. Are there any animals you wouldn't want to own that you feel nervous around? I think a lot of people would feel nervous around a spider. I don't think so. I'm completely intrigued by all animals. If I knew I could give it a good home, I would. there's not any animal that I'd be nervous to own. But there's some that I don't agree with owning. Like, can you see her? It's kind of splotchy, the glass. But that's her. This is Twisty. He is my bearded dragon. So how did you get started with the YouTube channel? Um, well, I actually had no plans at all to be a YouTuber. That was never something I was actually incredibly insecure um, on camera. I had one hedgehog when I was younger. I had a Twitter account for her where I just posted funny pictures of her because she was extremely social for a hedgehog. And it got really popular. Her most popular picture was on Ellen DeGeneres. It, I saw Khloe Kardashian retweet it. Because of that, people started to say, I'm getting a hedgehog because of you. Like, I, I love your hedgehog, I want one. And I got very nervous. I kept trying to tell people like, she's extremely friendly for a hedgehog, don't get your expectations up. Cause I'll get a hedgehog out in a minute and you can see how they normally are. They don't want to touch. So I was worried that I was putting off the wrong idea to people. Like, and then finally I decided, you know, it'll be a lot easier if I just make a video and just reference it. Like if someone asks, I could just link them to it instead of having to type up a whole thing every time. So I made one video and it was called, uh, Why Does My Hedgehog Hate Me? I mean, it got a couple thousand views. It wasn't anything incredible. About six months into doing YouTube, I, uh, Finding Dory was coming out, um, that movie Finding Dory. And it made me very nervous because I knew a bunch of kids were gonna go want to buy um, a blue or a blue tang, which is what Dory was. And they get huge, they need 200 gallon tanks, they're extremely hard. Two or three days before Finding Dory came out, I made a video about like, don't buy a blue tang and this is why, and I did a whole video and it blew up. It got like 200,000 views, it, and then I started making more than what I was making at my job on YouTube. So then I was like, okay, I'm young enough to where I can quit my job at a pet store and I won't be ruined. Like I can go get another job if it doesn't work out. So I quit it and I started working on YouTube and just been there ever since. I'm gonna swap him out because I really don't want him to poop on me. So he did have a really big meal last night and I'm just waiting for it to just all come out. If I can get a hedgehog out and just show you what they're like. Her name is Ella. I'm trying to get her out without disturbing her too much, but it's gonna be difficult. Oh my God, that noise is so funny. Yes, that, that's their scary noise. That's like, leave me alone. That's a hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> and it. if you try to touch it, it hurts. So that's how they are 90% of the time. That's what started the channel is I just wanted people to understand this is what they're buying. They're not buying the hedgehog that I had that would literally just do anything. That's that. Do you think that your personality as like a YouTube host, what relationship does that have to your personality as like a friend and a person in the world? I definitely do make the YouTube version of myself the most likable version of myself. I know a lot of people who watch my channel and stuff when they find, when they run up to me in person and stuff, I know they're expecting like that person that they've seen on camera to be the person that I am in real life. And of course, in a lot of ways it is me, but also I'm not, not edited in real life, so I'm a lot more awkward. But on YouTube, you're, you're playing yourself, which I do think is one thing that separates YouTubers from TV stars and things like that. Like, it's a lot more personable, like people really get attached to you. You've talked about some really personal issues on your channel. Um, yeah. Was it hard to open up about those? I've come to terms with like even the hard things in my life, so sharing them with others doesn't seem scary to me. So I just hope that talking about that stuff resonates with someone who may not be as comfortable talking about it so then they know they're not alone. Taylor has been diagnosed with both celiac disease and Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Do you think that any of your like medical problems, your experiences with your health, have they impacted your YouTube career? Yes, um, both negatively and positively. Positively in the sense where I've made connections with so many people that were like, you know, I was just browsing through YouTube and oh my god, you have the same illness I have, I've never met someone with that, and like it, it really helps a lot of viewers who do have it. It makes them feel more comfortable and more accepting of what they have, so it did help me build an audience that I may have not particularly built without that. But negatively, yes, because a lot of YouTubers normally do like twice weekly, or they, they have a schedule. I don't. It's just when I feel good, I film, when I don't, I don't. So that's one thing that does probably affect my channel negatively. I could probably be even more successful if I could be like, you know, hey guys, every Thursday at this time, there's gonna be a video, but my life, like every second, I might be healthy and then I might not be. Taylor's health isn't her only obstacle. She's also faced harassment from some followers. 
I have a very, very supportive fan base, but as I've grown with time, um, the more popular you get, the more you're going to rub some people the wrong way. And um, sadly, that's <laughs> there's a lot of people who are like, I don't keep my pet the exact same way you do, so you're an abuser. Like, there's just a very... Kind of like with people with kids, like if you have a kid, there's some people that are like, oh, you can't do this with your kid because I didn't do it with my kid. It drives me crazy that there are people that think that I'm hurting my animals. That's been the hardest thing learning how to deal with is like dealing with people who don't like you and it's, it's, it's crazy, but I'm getting better at dealing with it.